Where to start if you want to practice Bolognese salt play? Hello there, Martin here from Schildwach Potsdam. And in this video, I would like to address everyone who is about to start or is thinking about to start practicing salt play from the Bolognese sources. That is the written accounts of fencing masters of Bologna, Italy in the 16th century. And like every good source, it all starts with the ingredients. So in this first part, I want to focus on the written translation that we got of the original Italian texts into English because that is what is most relevant for my viewers at least. Okay, first off let me start uh, telling you that if you're completely new to historical martial arts and you're intrigued by the way that the Bolognese move, that it's still best for you to seek out a local club doesn't matter really what system they teach, it's always better to get some hands-on experience. Okay, another thing that I don't want to focus on in this video are secondary sources. There are a lot of secondary sources on historical salt play and the Bolognese, uh, fence, of the Bolognese fencing masters in particular, on YouTube or in uh, written accounts. But uh, in this one, I want to focus on the sources themselves. So, for example, while well, I could easily recommend this book, The Swordsmanship of Renaissance Italy, to you uh, as a secondary source, it's not really uh, the, the primary source that you want to base your fencing upon. Okay? And just uh, as a follow up, in the next video in the series, I want to get into details depending on what your specific goals are, which sources of these primary sources you should approach first or what might be a sensible way in approaching them. Okay, so let's get right into it. So the first source I want to talk about is Antonio Manciolino's Opera Nova. Hey, basically, up to now we got two really good translations. Of course, and that has to be said for, for all sources, there are, um, there's material either on Wittenauer and in the Facebook group, group uh, Giovanni Dalla Gocchia, which is freely available and you might want to use as well. But if you're a bit more serious about this, then I would wholeheartedly recommend you to get one of these paid books, of course, but uh, in this way you also support the actual translators doing the really hard work for you. Okay, so let's get into Antonio Manciolino. So um, the most common version of this interpretation is this one. It's from Tom Leone and it's actually, uh, it was actually published quite a while ago and it was a book that I first got uh, on my journey starting in the Bolognese system. And I really have to say it is a great book and it's a great source in general uh, to start out with. It's also the earliest uh, published source that we got from Bologna. Uh, the, uh, the book from, that we got is uh, actually the second edition from Antonio Manciolino, so he references a first one that was published in the 1520s, but this one is now from 1531. Um, so this is uh, the earliest we got on a confirmed basis and it deals basically uh, with all manners of weapons which has to be taken in with a grain of salt because there's uh, actually no long sword for, uh, for example in there and I know a lot of my viewers uh, take a big interest in that as the uh, historical martial arts community in itself is a bit long sword focused. Uh, yeah, take it or leave it, right? So, this is uh, the first book I got and it's really nice because it gets you a nice primer on the system. So there's a really nice uh, introduction by Tom Leone. Also some context on, um, on Giovanni della Bandiniera. So uh, Condottieri from the 16th century that uh, supposedly fought in the way that the Bolognese authors also talk about. 
Okay, so it could be discussed if there is a Bolognese system or it's more like a northern Italian system, but several people um, fenced upon this kind of system, upon uh, this kind of employing the guards, attacks, etc. etc. and they are, um, they are referenced in these original sources. Okay, so you get a nice introduction by Tom Leone on the on the guards, on the actions, on some context, and then you get the um, the historical source in itself, which is really clearly translated. So uh, Tom really focuses in his translations on making making the text understandable to the English reader. Okay, and I really like the approach that he's very clear about that is this is not a word-to-word -word translation okay because I was saying something about uh, primary sources and of course a translation there's always already an interpretation in there okay and that has to be taken into account of course and that is also why I personally uh, doing this uh, semi-professional try to get more translations uh, that are available to get more viewpoints in, viewpoints in, and then compared uh, with my own translation of the original transcriptions as they are available, of course. Okay, so like I said, this is a really clear translation. Um, you get a lot of footnotes with uh, some historical references on these certain parts, and that makes this book really, really nice. Okay. Still Antonio Manciolino, this is uh, quite a bit newer and that's the translation by Jarek Swenger and you will notice that uh, a couple of authors like uh, translated all the stuff so there are basically three to four names that will come up over and over here again and uh, Tom and Jarek are two of them and probably the, the most prominent one and um, in comparison to uh, Tom's translation of Antonio Manciolino this takes in a bit more of the flowery language of the Renaissance authors. So I think this gives the, the book a really nice vibe to it and it's uh, very useful as, as a secondary source. So I would still probably, if I would just start out with Manchurian, I'll get this one first from, uh, from Tom because it's a bit more, a bit clearer, a bit more concise, not so overwhelming. But this one is definitely a must-have if you if you love the Bolognese sauces and especially Antonio Mancini. Okay. Let's get to the next one, and that is Achille Marozzo, who published his uh, Opera Nova as well in 1536. So this is the most extensive work on Bolognese swordsmanship that we got. It deals with the most weapons, with the most weapon combinations, and it's really quite extensive. Morozzo in itself, though, is as a writer very, very flowery and oftentimes not as clear as you wish, because he wrote not to a student, but to his son Sebast uh, Sebastiano, who would one day uh, take over his school, even though Marazzo actually advised him uh, to seek any other profession. Okay, but uh, his son did it and he did it well, so uh, good on that. Okay, so here you got sword and buckler, single sword, you got uh, sword and dagger, sword and cape, all this good stuff, sword and shield. You got the long sword, you got pole weapons, you got uh, some wrestling, unarmed versus dagger. So it's a it's really nice book uh, speaking of just um, the the amount of weapons and weapon combinations it deals with but it's uh, quite hard to get into that said um, Jarek's translation of uh, of it did a phenomenal job I think so he really makes a lot of the wordings uh, from our so much clearer actually so I can definitely recommend this one as well Okay. According uh, still to Marazzo, we got a translation of the first of five books of his Opera Nova from Tom Leone as well. So this deals with the sword and buckler specifically. 
and I really like with this one as well because like I said Tom really makes it very clear uh, what the actions are supposed to to look like and how these like Italian Renaissance uh, slang translates into modern English uh, actually well okay so it's not like just a bunch of words just translated word by, by word where you can't make a sense out of it anymore but it's really really uh, nicely written and uh, you can easily work through this one in one or two evenings if you are just reading and then um, you can actually put it into practice quite well. That's at least how I learn. Okay, so I usually read the sources in whole first and then I go to practice. Okay, next one. We get Angelo Vigiani, another Bolognese author that is quite different from the others actually because he tries to reform or he criticizes the the usual um, the usual way of describing guards positions and actions okay so for example he gives uh, he condenses the the guards that the other other Bolognese authors use to only seven and give them uh, give them new names and stuff like this but he's really really awesome if you want a detailed account of body mechanics and some technical concepts that are present in sword play in this space and time okay and for Vijani we again get uh, two translations and it's again from Jared Swanger and Tom Leone. The one I started with was the one with uh, Jarex and there are also a couple of free ones uh, floating around so uh, if you just want to have a first look into this manual this uh, might be already enough. Uh, but in this, this published version he gives you also like a condensed paper of all the things that are according to Jarek, of course, relevant to, to your fencing. So it's a really nice, nice book. And the manual in itself, or let's say what it's translated of it, it's fairly concise as well. Why do I say this? Because Vijani actually published three books as well. And book one and two are like just so pompous and pedundant that it's it's a horrible read, okay, so, so don't bother. So what we actually get is a, is a third book, which is still like really, like he repeats his points over and over again. So it's not like the easiest read and it's written in a dialogue, which I personally quite like, but it's not everyone's uh, taste. So um, yeah, so the, the third book, which actually deals with fencing is fairly concise and it's actually just uh, basically two actions that he teaches but a lot of body mechanics and tactics, like I said. So uh, I really like Vijani a lot for that. And I think Jack did a great job translating it. So um, in comparison to, to Tom's uh, translation, it's again like, like this, these are preferences of the translators, right? So Jarek goes a bit more like into the, the flowery side of the language, which, which is quite nice, I think. And Tom, on the other hand, makes the action and the what the author wanted to come across, like he makes it really clear. Okay, so uh, for beginners, I would probably almost always suggest uh, Tom's translation, but since Jay got the um, like the little paper at the end describing the action in quite detail, I think it's totally fine as well. So you can decide which one you want to get. They are both author awesome. Okay. Okay. So that was the third author, Mancellino Marozzo Vigiani, and now let's get to Giovanni della Gocchia. So uh, he published in uh, 1572, and so it's uh, at least from the confirmed dates, it's a, the latest manual. And here we, we only got the translation by, by Jarek once again. And I think here this is totally fine. So even if Jarek uh, would be a bit more flowery than, than Tom, Giovanni da Lagocchi in itself isn't that flowery uh, written. So Giovanni da Lagocchi is just a, a great 
a great manual to get into the Bolognese system in general. It's super concise, of course it doesn't deal with uh, that many weapons, so it basically just deals with single sword, sword and dagger and sword and cape. And then you get some like uh, battlefield applications, or not, not battlefield advice, like how to uh, position your arquebusiers, so your your gunners and your troops and stuff like that, which isn't really uh, relevant for us anymore. So it's fairly concise and the, the system of fence that he presents is also uh, quite boiled down, but it's clear and that makes him a really great uh, beginner source to get into this style of fencing, okay? Okay, so um, I've forgotten the Anonimo, obviously, and that's not without purpose. Okay, so first let me say the Anonimo Bolognese is just called that because the, the guards and the actions that are presented, the language that is used, is more or less consistent with the Bolognese sources. Or more precisely to speak, with Marozzo, Manciolino, and uh, Della Rocchia, because, like I said, Vijani uses uh, uh, quite a bit of different terms, okay? So this is the only thing that actually links this book to, to the Bolognese sources. We actually don't know if it's from Bologna, and this is just something I would like to make clear. We also don't know the exact date where this, when this was written, okay? So basically these are two uh, manuscripts um, translated into, into one big book by Stephen Freitas who did a tremendous job of getting uh, like these transcriptions and translating them into uh, understandable modern English and he also gives uh, does a great job giving you like a little primer, an introduction about action guards, footwork and so on and what I really like about the Anonimo. It deals again with a lot of weapons and it's like gets you so many plays that you probably have a, a lifetime to just work through all of them in a proper fashion. But it gives you one of the best introductions, so primary source introductions, not like uh, Stephen's introduction, but Stephen's introduction is, is, is great, of course, as well. But the primary uh, source introduction, so in the Anonimo, it gives you a thousand or a bit more words just on how the system works, how tempo is to perceived and to use, how footwork is generally uh, conducted, how the guards are formed exactly, and also on the psychology of fighting, in which mental state you should adopt when you're fighting an opponent who might want to kill you, right? So this is a part and that part alone is already worth getting this book, okay? So it's, it's really, really awesome just for that alone, even if you don't want to use this as your primary source. And like, it's, like I said, depending on what your goals are, you should uh, approach one of these books, of course, uh, which uh, with shifting preferences first. Okay, the last one I would uh, still like to show you, it's not from the 16th century anymore and it doesn't uh, deal with uh, what we now would call a side sword anymore. But if you're not new on this channel, you also know that the term side sword is just more or less a modern in invention to classify a category of sword that was mainly used in that space of time, while the authors speak of the spada, the sword, which could be more or less any kind of the sword that was used in that day. So it would be still something more akin to an arming sword. Later it would be something more akin, so for Giovanni della Rocca it would be more akin maybe even to a rapier. So, and there's always variants, right? So the, they deal with all kinds of spade, the, um, the swords that were used in that period. and. Like I said, last book is more about the rapier. It's from Camillo Palladini. And uh, basically it deals with rapier and uh, together with a couple of other weapon combinations and even halberds. And 
it's from Bologna still, so it's, uh, it was published at the beginning of the 17th century. And I think if you are dabbling into like later sources and you like some rapier in your practice as well, this is a really great source to look into. And it also gives you like a lot of context from a martial perspective because Camillo Palladini basically adopts the Roman system, so of numbering the guards, uh, so just adopting four guards basically, like prima, seconda, terza and quarta, or quarta. Um, but he's still from Bologna, so he basically uses the now modern adopted language at that time to still describe guards that would be common within the Bolognese uh, fencing system, fencing terms, or maybe the, the older style around there as well. So I, I really like it and he's really hands-on, right? So it's, uh, for example, he describes uh, how to draw a sword when you are in a, in a pub surrounded by soldiers and to get out your weapon as quick as possible. So it's, it's really awesome for a lot of reasons and the actions that he presents are quite nice as well. And the, uh, the translation and uh, the editing was done by Piamarco Terminello and uh, Joshua Pendelon and yeah, they did a, a great job. It's, uh, it's not a cheap book, but it's like really, it's like uh, the quality is really, really great. So we get these really nice tables, which almost feel like you got um, like a facsimile of the original already in the act. Okay. So before this video gets too long, uh, I want to end it here. Like I said, in the next one, we'll talk about your goals and how these goals uh, determine, at least in my opinion, what I would recommend to you, which source you should approach first and what follows after that and stuff like that. And then um, if you have actually any goals, I didn't shoot that video yet uh, and you want me to address these personally in that video, just leave them in the comments down below. I hope this video was already useful for you. Remember you can support us via likes, shares and also on Patreon if you choose to. Any amount is highly appreciated. And um, yeah, for now, until next time, take care, ciao!